Oh god, oh god, oh god, here we go again. Ay, ay, ay. I don't know what was actually worse about this episode. What actually went down in it, or the fact that because my Wi-Fi is shit, I had to watch some GoGo anime, or Crunchyroll is just not doing well right now. I don't know why I went with that, but if any of you are experiencing problems with your Crunchyroll, please let me know and tell me I'm not going crazy. Anyways, so this week... Uh, was a duel that many people spent the past week jokingly saying we already know the conclusion of, and Konami, in all their wiseness, elected to not once ever give me the impression things weren't going in the way we all suspected, and then they all went went that way. We're all disappointed with Reigns and all is right with the universe. Um, let's start off with the positives, or positive and that is, I liked the fusion cards that were used by today's combatants. The Trickstar one is obviously makes sense because, well, you can just search it off Candina and it has search utility to search off Trickstars, or bleh, the ability to add back the Trickstar hand trap thing. Um, and then you have the, um, I'm just going to call him target demographic from now on. We'll get into that later, but let's be real here. Homura is target demographic. That's what he fucking is. Um... His is obviously great because it steals from the opponent, as we saw with Super Polymerization, that is a great thing to have in a card, and yeah, no, it's just really cool. And their fusion monsters were kind of neat. Aoi's was different and kind of crazy, but I thought it was sort of fun, and uh, Target Demographics was cool and had a much better design compared to Yusaku's shitty fusion monster, and it actually had a pretty cool effect. So, yeah... That's it. I don't want to make fun of the new Trickstars, because I know a lot of people probably will, as pretty much all Trickstar support after the first round in Code of the Duelist has been pretty bland and not all that usable with what the deck is. It, in Trickstar's defense, the problem is, is that they sort of have the same issue that other anime decks like DDDs and Black Wings, and even stuff that isn't from the anime like Shadol, Satellar Knights, all that uh, dual terminal, the good dual terminal archetypes had, and that is they didn't really need actual extra support after their initial thing. The decks works fine, they had themes, they had functionality, and they had fans. But since you need to still sell cards and sell booster sets, you make more of it to get people hyped, but then there isn't really anything you need to add. Trickstars are just fine on their own. They don't really need anything, unless you really did want to make a crazy Link Spam deck, which people don't seem to be interested in with the deck. And yes, we all make fun of the fact that it's a deck that loses to Gemini Elf, but let's be real here. If you're playing Trickstars, you're not playing it for battle damage. You're playing it for that sweet, sweet effect damage. So trying to give it more support just doesn't really work. So I've never really had a problem with all the Trickstar support. And now that we've addressed that, let's get on to the duel where all the new Trickstar stuff was bland and forgettable. Except maybe the fusion, which was kind of neat. The problem with uh, that I had with this duel, and tell me if you had this as well, is that this felt like one of those duels where they did a lot, they played a lot of cards, but I never felt like anything particularly engaging was happening. Yeah, it was cool to see Aoi set up a combo that should, in theory, take out target demographic, but considering I always felt like target demographic has to win because he better fits the target demographic, hence the name, I never at any point really believe it's going to work, and the episode seems very aware of this, so they don't even try. It's cool to see her set up a supposedly unbeatable combo, but sort of the problem whenever a good character goes up against Yusaku, I always just know he's just going to pull something random out of his ass that can just do everything. And that seemed to happen. It's like, there's only one card I can draw the thing that's hopefully to make me look cooler. <laughs> Um, and that's just kind of where the duel fails, and I'm even starting to get sick of all the noob Salaman, whatever the fucks. He just summons Heat Leo, and he just has a whole bunch of things around Heat Leo, which wouldn't be ultimately a problem if... I don't know, I just don't really find him that interesting, or his deck. The thing is, he worked in the duel against Go, because there felt like there was a narrative purpose, a little forced though it may have been, I at least got what they were trying to duel. 
This feels like the only real goal was A, or goals, was to get Aoi out of the scene because the women can't really do anything useful, and to keep this bizarre desire to keep target demographic looking cool, it's the same thing with Yusaku. Instead of making him a deep, complex character, they want to just go for just the most laziest basic interpretation, and that is, he just wins all the time. So what do you do? You have him just beat up all the other characters you came to like. That'll show him off as powerful, because it's not like they actually have good decks that make sense why they would win. Um, yeah, so this was pretty annoying. Also, it took a while to get going. Like, did we really need that stupid race? That was just to eat up time. It was just really annoying. Like, it just seems really irritating. And many people will point out, and I would love to believe this, that, oh, I always just gonna, she's gonna have this in the rest of her arc. She's gonna learn from this loss. That's the other weird thing. Why build up how much better and smarter and even more aggressive she's been if you're just gonna just get rid of her an episode later anyways? But many people will say that, oh, no, it's, uh, it, they even called it Blue Girl's first duel, which just made it weird. They were like, oh, no, she's gonna be back in two episodes and she's gonna get stronger. Well, we thought she was gonna have an arc after the whole Yusaku and Revolver duel the first time when, you know, they had six episodes basically dedicated to this girl and then she just kind of went away for like eight or nine episodes. And that's probably what they're going to do here. Now, some people will probably bring up the argument that Yu-Gi-Oh! is sexist or that I'm trying to insinuate they're sexist. I don't think they're necessarily sexist. I think it's more the fact that they're just following what the chart says. The chart says that we need to appeal to boys age 10 to 16. So that's what we're going to do. And so we're just going to make another male character who is pretty boringly like the protagonist. That was the other thing. When Go fought, uh, when he faced Go, it felt like that, well, his personality was at play. How he would handle the situation different from Yusaku was important. Again, it was a little forced and I'd argue a little lazy the way it was done, but I got a sense of the personality differences. This literally just felt like we need her out of the way because we don't really know what to do with her. Like, that's basically what happened here. And it just, again, it's just kind of annoyingly manipulative. Like, it's all just based around making you feel target demographic is cool, so you'll just keep watching because you just want to watch cool things. It's not like we're doing it because we respect your intelligence as the audience. It's not like we're doing it because we want it to be deeper complex. There does seem to be a lot to this character, but, well, if you're going to have him take out other main characters, in this case, Aoi, who most people like better and who has a deep arc and could be really interesting to see put into this situation... Well, what do you really expect us to react to? <laughs> like, I don't know. I just found this really messed up and a big mess. Because, again, you feel that push and pull between corporate heads who are like, we have to do it this way, and writers who really want to tell a deep, complex story. And again, maybe I will we'll be back... Or maybe we'll waste four episodes on this stupid Yusaku Bowman duel, all with annoying flashbacks. Uh, tell me what you think in the comments section below. That was that. I don't really have much else to say about this episode. As for the TCG question of the week... You know what? Since I actually brought up old decks getting support... Um, if you could pick one archetype right now that you think needs support, it doesn't have to be you think it needs a link or you think it needs like a whole overall, just one archetype that you think could use a little more attention by getting some real support, tell me that below. And as always, click to like, click to subscribe, and uh, let's hope Yusaku versus Bowman isn't bland.